we continue with simple extensions. In particular, we take a closer look at the property of algebraic. Recall, we have f a subfield of k. We'll say that alpha and k is algebraic over f if alpha is the root of some non-zero polynomial with coefficients in f. When this is the case, we've proved subfield of k generated by alpha and f is just f adjoint alpha, it's the polynomials in alpha with coefficients in f. Then there exists a unique monad polynomial, coefficients in f, of smallest degree with alpha as a root. Then we call this polynomial the minimal polynomial of alpha over f. We also have that this polynomial is irreducible over f. Finally, if we take the degree of f adjoint alpha over f, so this is just the dimension of f adjoint alpha over f as a vector space, this is equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial for alpha, and if this is equal to n, we say that alpha is algebraic over f of degree n. Now, this third property characterizes the notion of algebraic. So we have theorem, alpha is algebraic over f, if and only if, the degree of the subfield generated by f and alpha over f is finite. Now we've seen one direction, okay, that's in our statement over here. So for the other direction, let's suppose we have finite degree. So this is a finite dimensional vector space over f. I consider the elements, okay, one, alpha, alpha squared, and so on. Because this is a finite dimensional vector space, the set must be linearly dependent over f. That means we have some relation as follows. That just says alpha is a root of some non-zero polynomial with coefficients in f. So algebraic. That gives our theorem. Now with a the theorem, we can characterize all the elements that are not algebraic, and these are what we would call transcendental over f. So for these, we have, okay, alpha is transcendental over f. If alpha is not the root of any non-zero polynomial with coefficients in f. Or, if we take the degree of the subfield generated by alpha and f over f, that's infinite. Or, we have that subfield generated by alpha and f inside of k, it's isomorphic to the rational functions over f. The theorem gives a great advantage when working with algebraic elements. Instead of having to find a polynomial with our element as a root, in general, that can be difficult or impossible. Instead, we need only calculate with degrees. Then we only need upper bounds. Let's develop some rules using degrees. First, we have proposition. Alpha is algebraic over f with degree equal to n. We take beta and f adjoint alpha. So beta is a polynomial in alpha with coefficients in f. Then beta is algebraic over f with degree less than or equal to n. To see this, take the subfield generated by beta and f. This is a vector subspace of f adjoint alpha. So its dimension over f is less than or equal to n. That calculates the degree. By the theorem, we have that beta is now algebraic over f, and that's our result. Note, at no point do we look for a polynomial with beta as a root. Next, proposition. We have alpha algebraic over f with degree m, beta algebraic over f with degree n. I choose a gamma and f adjoint alpha and beta. So that means gamma is a polynomial in alpha and beta with coefficients in f. Then gamma is algebraic over f with degree less than or equal to m times n. Now, we use the same principle that we use in the first proposition. So I just want to show that the degree of f adjoint alpha and beta over f is finite. See this, okay, we have alpha and beta algebraic over f. So f adjoint alpha is finite dimensional as a vector space over f, with a basis given by taking powers of alpha up through m minus one power. Likewise, for f adjoint beta, we have a basis given by powers of beta up through the n minus first power. So if I want a spanning set of f adjoint alpha and beta, 
we're just to take powers of alpha times powers of beta using the same indices. Now we know that might not be a basis, but it's always spanning. So that means the degree of epi joint alpha and beta over F is less than or equal to M times N. And that gives our result. Now, for examples, let's consider, okay, we're gonna work over the rationals. We have square root of two plus square root of three plus square root of five. Now we could look for polynomial with alpha as a root, but it's easier just to take a look at degrees. Now what I can do is start with the rationals, and I'm just gonna join a square root of two, square root of three, and a square root of five. We should be careful as to whether we're actually making extensions here, but for the purposes of showing algebraic, we don't need to. So I know here, we're gonna do an extension of degree either one or two, one or two, one or two. So the largest that I can extend on the whole is by taking the products. So I know that if I take okay, this element, its degree over the rationals is gonna be less than or equal to okay, the degree of Q adjoint square root of two, square root of three, square root of five over the rationals, which we just know is less than or equal to eight. Okay, in fact, it's equal to eight, but we can avoid doing the work. Okay, it's enough here to get the algebraic property. Now I'll leave it to you to look for the minimal polynomial for this alpha, which we can find. For another example, okay, this just shows why we need less than or equal to m times n in the second proposition. We take the rationals and adjoin, okay, the sixth root of two or the fourth root of two. Okay, well, if we do each of these, okay, degree six, degree four, but if we adjoin together, we get degree 12. Okay, we note here, if you track all the field towers, when I take the intersection of these, we're gonna have Q adjoined square root of two, a degree two extension, which explains why we're offset by two here. Of course, these results extend if we adjoin any finite number of algebraic elements. And then we have the following two corollaries. Now, if we apply the second proposition, we have the following theorem. Alpha is algebraic over f of degree m, beta is algebraic over f of degree n, then alpha plus or minus beta, alpha times beta, and alpha divided by beta, beta non-zero, all algebraic over f with degree less than or equal to m times n. This holds because these are all elements of f adjoint alpha and beta. And why this result's important, this says if I take all elements algebraic over f inside of k, we obtain a subfield. For a special case of this, let's consider all elements algebraic over the rationals inside the complex numbers. We call this subfield the algebraic numbers. So let's see what's inside of here. Now, if we consider the rationals themselves, so let's take Q inside of the rationals. This satisfies non-zero polynomial X minus Q. So we have degree one. And as a field extension, if we adjoin Q to the rationals, we just get the rationals. So again, degree as a field extension is equal to one. We consider degree equal to two. So here we're gonna have some alpha, that's a root of an irreducible quadratic. So ax squared plus bx plus c, a, b, and c rational. To understand behavior here, we compute the discriminant, so d equal to b squared minus four ac. And to get irreducible, we must have that d is not a square of a rational. That gives two cases. When d is positive, we have a subfield of the reals, Otherwise, just a subfield of the complex numbers. Now, the reason we can understand the behavior here is because we have the quadratic formula, which we get by completing the square. We note we'll have analogous formulas for cubics and quartics, so degrees three and four over the rationals, but there's no corresponding formula for degree five. So there will be some quintics which we can't solve, but that doesn't mean we can't solve them in special cases. We can go in the other direction. If I want to construct algebraic numbers from scratch, I can start by taking all radicals of rational numbers, take all linear combinations of those over the rationals, 
these are all algebraic. Then we can take all radicals of those numbers, take all linear combinations, and so on. We could hope that this process catches all algebraic numbers, but again, we run into a problem with degree five. For instance, if I take the real root of x to the fifth minus x plus one, so here's the picture, has a single real root. This root cannot be expressed in terms of arithmetic operations and radicals on the rational numbers. So this is the best way to describe this number. Of course, in practice, we would just use an approximation. We'll see why degree five polynomials are a problem later on. For a final example, consider trig values on rational multiples of pi. These are always algebraic numbers. Now, we focus on cosine and sine. We're gonna pick an integer n greater than or equal to two and consider nth roots of unity. I define omega to be e to the two pi over n. So by Euler's formula, that's equal to cosine of two pi over n plus i sine of two pi over n. And we note that omega is a root of x to the n minus one. Now omega is not equal to one, so I can factor out an x minus one. We know that omega is a root of x to the n minus one plus all the way down to plus x plus one. So that means omega is algebraic with degree less than or equal to n minus one. For cosine and sine, again, we go to Euler's formula. So I can write cosine of two pi m over n with m an integer as omega to the m plus omega to the minus m over two. This is an element of Q adjoint omega. So this cosine is algebraic with degree less than or equal to n minus one. Likewise for sine. Okay, here we'll have the same formula, change the plus to a minus in the numerator, and now I divide by i. So the sine is gonna be an element of Q adjoint omega and i. So it'll be algebraic with degree less than or equal to two times n minus one. For examples, okay, first familiar example, sine of two pi over three, it's equal to square root of three over two. And this is a root of the polynomial four x squared minus three. So definitely algebraic. A little bit fancier, let's try cosine of four pi over five. This is equal to minus a half, the golden ratio. So minus quantity one plus square root of five over four. And this is gonna be a root of four x squared plus two x minus one. Now, for something, a degree of difficulty beyond that, we have cosine of two pi over 17. 